the right to self-defense has been part of the heritage of Canadians. Since long before there was any such thing as a gun, whether it was spelt the way we do or G-U-N-N-E. It goes back to the end of Roman Britain. It was prized by people like William Blackstone, as well as such iconic Canadian figures as William Lyon Mackenzie, Sir John A. Macdonald, and Louis Riel. But before we look at that history, we need to confront a paradox in the modern attitude toward the past. Now, until fairly recently, it was taken for granted that Canada had been, by and large, a success. That it was our traditions and habits that had made us prosperous, dynamic, open, tolerant, and a bulwark of liberty in the global struggles against tyranny in the 20th century. But lately, there has been a very different understanding of history as a kind of grand noirceur, a nightmare of racism and sexism from which, in James Joyce's words, we struggle to awake. And to those who hold this view, and it's a surprisingly prevalent one in Canada's elite nowadays, if something is demonstrably a part of our history, that doesn't make it a source of pride and strength. It makes it a source of shame, something to be rejected. These are people who don't want mentions of the War of 1812 and the Citizenship Guide, who are ashamed of the victory of liberty under law at the Plains of Abraham. But they don't come right out and say, you know, we don't like our past. It was that way, and that was bad. They try to substitute a kind of fake history where we were collectivists, where we never had the watch and ward, where the citizens were not essentially responsible for policing and skeptical of an armed state. And that is a false history, as well as being, frankly, in my view, an uninspiring one. What we're going to look at in this documentary is the real history of Canada. And it's not perfect. There were times when we did not live up to our ideals, particularly on matters of race. But this is our heritage, whether it made us great or whether it prevented us from being great, whether we can only truly become a worthwhile country when we turn our backs on that heritage is a separate question from what our history actually was. This is our history. The right to bear arms has been a part of it from time immemorial. And whether you like that or dislike it, it is dishonest or feeble-minded to deny that this is our past. And it's puzzling too because if you do not admire at least one of William Lyon Mackenzie, Louis Riel, and Sir John A. Macdonald, it's very hard to see in what sense you consider yourself a proud Canadian. Yet every one of these men was passionately attached to this right to bear arms that came out of our British legacy of freedom. We're now going to take a look at our real history, including, critically, the right to defend ourselves.